here's your host, Alex Garrett. All right, well, I feel like with spring right around the corner here on the Alex Garrett Podcast Network, you might be interested in a sport called disc golf. Now, this is a very unique kind of golf, and I'll have my next guest on. Um, but what really appealed to me about Carter Aarons and his family is that Carter is a teenager that wants to do good for those with, um, if you will, dyslexia and other kind of uh, disabilities that, that might hold someone back. And, and Carter, thanks for joining me, first of all. Yeah, thank you for having me. Well, Carter, to start off with, you know, dyslexia is very, uh, it's a big deal. Even the city of New York has combated it in our schools. But how are you combating dyslexia through sports? I want to start there. Well, if it's okay if I speak a little bit to that. Um, sports is giving him kind of a, a pathway when school isn't really um, easy for him. And so sports is an outlet both for him to, when he's during, has school and school is going on, to kind of take a break from it, but also gives him a pathway to something that he can do once school is finished, especially at the high school level. And that is Chuck Aarons, the father of Carter. Now, Carter, I know that you've been also doing online schooling and you're combining both academics and athletics through online schooling. Talk about those benefits, if you will. Yeah, well, with online learning, it's way easier to like get all my school done since I can just like mold it around like when I'm practicing and everything. So like if I'm doing like a tournament in the afternoon, I can first start by like doing some work in the morning. And if I don't get it all done, I can do it later in the day. And just like if I'm not having a tournament and just doing practicing, I can just practice whenever then just do schoolwork at another time. It's very cool. You are actually going to compete. I believe I read twelve to different twelve to fifteen different tournaments. So, tell us the preparation that goes into each tournament and and how uh, how you do prepare for these kind of disco golf uh, tournaments. Yeah. So for me, every tournament, I try to practice probably three hours a day now, and like in the morning, I try to practice like more of putting so that's like throwing it into the basket from close range since it's a little colder out than like once it gets hotter in the in the day i go out to like a field and just work on like drives so like longer shots and try to get it close to the basket well i know that uh you are being supported by your family by Weba. now tell us what Weba is the washington virtual academy tell us about their role in all of this uh, making this possible for you yeah their their uh online thing is very nice because it's super flexible i can do the work whenever and i don't have like certain times to do it it's super flexible and i have like only one or two zoom meetings that i have to do and then those other days, I can just practice whenever, then just do my schoolwork in the other half of the day. Chuck, Chuck I want to ask you this. You know, um, homeschooling is becoming sort of a trend, but how did you know that homeschooling was the best route for Carter, and, and when did that start for him? Yeah, so it started last year, and it got to the point where with him competing at such a high level, I mean, he's competing on the pro tour. He's the youngest player uh, on the disc golf pro tour and competing literally all over the country. Um, the school that he was at was supportive, but it was hard for teachers to get work to us either ahead of time or during his competitions. So he wasn't able to keep up very well. So it meant he had to do a lot of work when he got back home to keep up. And now with the Washington Virtual Academy, um, it's great because it's a public school, um, part of the uh, Washington State school system. And so literally it allows him to do, like you said, you know, be really flexible with the work. Um, you know, it helps it with us with travel because he's got a really two different schedules that he works through. Um, if he's at home and we're just and we're home based, he's literally doing work in the morning. He leaves for lunch and goes and practices comes back and does some more work. And then um, if he needs to, he can do work uh, at night. We happen to live in Seattle. So 
if it's raining, he'll do his schoolwork. And then once the sun comes out, he'll go. It's flexible enough that he'll go out and play and practice at that time. Um, so it just, it's really, it varies through the day. And then when we're on out at tournaments, like we are now, we're just leaving Florida. But he was able to spend, uh, you know, a couple nights doing homework. Um, he was doing homework this morning early. And during those times, typically when he has a round in the afternoon, we're getting ready for it. And then by the end of the day, he's uh, able to do his work at night when it's dark out. I mean, that's a big thing for us, especially this time of year, is having him practice during the daylight and do his homework in the evenings when it's dark out. Carter and Chuck, this is a question for both of you, actually. Uh, Carter, when did you know that disc golf was going to be your passion? And um, Chuck, when did you know that Carter was going to be so into disc golf? Like, I want it from both perspectives here. Yeah, I'll first by saying, like, how I got into it and, like, when I knew it was what I wanted to do. I had a babysitter that brought me and my brother out every day for probably three summers straight, and me and my brother just fell in love with it, just seeing, like, a Frisbee fly, and it just was super satisfying, and I just fell in love with it ever since. Yeah, and for for us, you know, he had a real passion for the sport. And that first tournament he ever played in, he ended up winning. Um, I had had a, a short time that I did a sport at a pretty high level, and I wanted to give him the same opportunity, both him and his brother, and last year, we decided to hit the pro tour a little bit and uh, see what would happen. And last year, he ended up taking a, a fifth place on the pro tour during one of the events and then a 15th place on the tour in an elite event, um, which kind of just catapulted him uh, on the disc golf pro tour. So he earned a, a tour card this year that he was granted. And this year, he's making a living, basically. He makes a salary, makes a living doing disc golf. So for him, it was, we got to find a way to allow him to have this career and finish up school at the same time. So this became like the best possible solution. And the education has been fantastic. It, it almost seems like he gets more one-on-one time with his online learning. And like he said, in this, the flex program that he's in, he doesn't have to be in the actual certain times that classes are that they're like your typical online learning would be. There's a class. It's at two o'clock. You need to be watching at that time with the flex program. It makes it nice because he can actually watch those things later that are in are recorded. Carter, did you have any interest in the actual in, in golf, you know, like the nine hole or 18 hole kind of golf and, and did that have an interest as well? Is that why you sort of adapted to disc golf as well? Uh, I did not play golf at the start but then like now i'm started like grad gradually playing golf a little bit from disc golf actually and now i think golf is like a really good thing if i need to like have some time off from disc golf and i'm like having any time if i just have any time off then i just go play golf or just do schoolwork. you know it's an interesting question here about the healthy work life. We've kind of been covering that. Um, I want to know about the, the teammates because obviously disc golf is, is competitive. Um, are, do you have teammates uh, along with you on the course or is it only you, right? It's kind of you just competing against the world here. Yeah, it's me and basically your card mates that you have. So there's four people on a card and you just go through a round of 18 holes. Then like after that round, then the next day, if you place well, you're on a better card for the next day than just on and on. And I'm actually sponsored, so uh, I've, like, sponsored teammates, basically, that we talk to and just hang out with. One of the most in- interesting things, and, and Dad, you can weigh in here and as well, uh, Chuck Aarons, um, you're also passing it on to younger uh, kids you know that that they're younger than you uh, with the with disc golf. Uh, hey Chuck, what does that mean to see your son become a teacher at this? And Carter, how does that help you up your game? And and does the online schooling help you be, become a teacher also? Yeah, as far as you know, watching it, it's fantastic. It's great that he can really share his passion with others. We do we we go to schools, we go to boys and girls clubs, so that he can teach. And what's really fun is he kind of becomes a celebrity. So we went to a an elementary school and taught over 400 kids uh, disc golf and installed a disc golf course 
um, at the school. And it was pretty fun to see the kids wanting his autograph and all kinds of things because we showed some videos of, of what he does and who he is uh, beforehand. And so, you know, that's fantastic. And he's, he's in front of a camera a lot. He's doing interviews a lot. So he's learning some things that he might not even learn in school doing what, what he's doing currently. And so that's all, you know, really fantastic life lessons for, for the future. And so Carter, you can talk about that some more. Yeah. So like online learning really helps doing that too, just because if you're like on a trip somewhere and doing like, uh, a clinic or like helping other people and teaching other people the sport you can because that has like a certain time that you have to do it then you can just go and do that then the online school really helps because you can just do the online school at a later time you know when I when I talk and by the way I have uh, one leg so I kind of have been around those with disabilities uh, or my whole life. So this whole dyslexia and my mom actually has dyslexia. So this whole story of how you're overcoming it is very interesting to me. But when we hear the words learning disabilities, um, I think of, of the word patience. So would you say WAVA has sort of helped you grow patience with this dyslexia while you're overcoming it? And how have they been patient in this process as you do both of these different, you know, you're athletically gifted and you're academically gifted. How does WAVA uh, support you in both of those as you're overcoming dyslexia. Yeah, it's really nice because in the classroom you'll have like a certain time in every class and you might get rushed a little bit and not have enough time to finish it, what you're doing in that class period. And with WAVA, you can just, you have basically unlimited time in your day to really get what you need to do done. So, like, you can just do your assignments very well with unlimited time. Yeah, the, the te- you know, he used to have struggles with being able to take tests in school because he didn't have enough time to, to get through them because with dex- dyslexia, it takes him a little bit longer. And so this allows him, you know, that, that time. Um, and then it, it also is kind of nice because if he has questions, he can either ask his teachers, he can email his teachers, or it gives him the ability to ask myself or my wife, uh, you know, some questions to see if we can help him understand something a little bit better. And not only does he just have dyslexia, but he's got uh, an executive function disorder where um, his executive function skills are really low, um, which makes it hard for him to kind of go through a typical directions on how to do things. He's more about the beginning and the end. And what we found through um, neuropsychology is that uh, an interesting thing about that, and when you talk about adapting, is his visual spatial skills are kind of off the charts, um, really, really high compared to uh, most people. And the neuropsychologist feels that's probably why uh, disc golf is almost his, it's almost a superpower for him in a way uh, to have disc golf to, to, to do because of those skills. All right. Well, what about those listening today uh, that might be suffering from what they call learning disability and trying to overcome it? Um, and they see you doing all of this kick-ass uh, work and athleticism. What's your message to them today, Carter? Yeah, with like you can do anything with school, and if you need like extra time and like uh, you need it to be flexible, you can just switch to online school. You don't always have to just stick to just ordinary public school. Uh, uh, Dad, do you want to weigh in on that also, or or the the whole public versus homeschooling? Well, yeah, absolutely. And and I would say, you know, for those that are struggling, um, the biggest thing that we could do for Carter was, you know, advocate for him. I mean, that's so much of when we've talked to others that struggle with schooling, especially when it comes to, you know, whatever the disability might be. But, um, trying to have a parent or some a guardian or somebody advocate for the child is so important uh, with that. And as far as if you have those things, I mean, there's find a passion, find what you're passionate about and try to make it happen. You know, it, it, for us, it was trying to give the opportunities for Carter to get to tournaments. Um, and other people have other things that they're passionate about. So whether, you know, it's dance or football or baseball, um, he's had an individual that's kind of mentored him a little bit. And what he's always said is just show up, you know, for, for Carter, it's show up at the tournaments. You might not do great 
at everyone, but keep showing up. So if it's dance, if it's something else, just always keep showing up. And eventually that passion will turn into to something bigger over time. Um, and as far as, you know, going from the public school to the uh, online learning, which is still public school, um, but it's just it has the flexibility. And for us, we found how they're managing his learning disabilities uh, have been better than in a typical school environment just because there's more it seems like there's more one on one time. Um, you know, because you're actually able to set aside those times to help. And they've been really um, helpful in addressing his needs. And so that's been what's so so important with the WAVA program. And if there's, we've talked to a lot of athletes out there that are in his same situation, there's a small group of young kids that are doing the same thing. And they're starting to switch to online schooling as well, because it has that flexibility. You're still doing the same learning. Um, and I'd also say one of the things we found out during COVID is Carter really excelled on online learning um, where his brother didn't, you know, his brother's really much better about being in the classroom. So he's actually, uh, you know, at a public school where we live. Uh, and so they do it differently because this, they both take to this type of learning differently. So this was the, the best version we could see for Carter and he really took to it. All right. Let's talk about the Washington, let's talk about Wava's social atmosphere because obviously you're homeschooled but are there times where you get to meet your classmates that you're literally in in you know the same programs with is there any opportunity for that yeah like homeroom is one of them where you can uh join that's the one zoom meeting i have and there's all the students there and you can just meet all the students in your homeroom and then they have a bunch of other programs outside of uh just their classes that they can do um, all types of different clubs and things that you can be a part of um, at their school as well. When you're at the disc golf tournaments though, do you find yourself socializing while focusing on your game? Like how has the socialization socialization been um, since the switch to homeschool? Yeah. With all my uh, tournaments I have, you basically meet a whole group of people and there's just, so many people at every tournament and all the fans come up to you. So you really get a bunch of social interaction with a lot of people. I think the million dollar question for me is because, you know, I was around college athletics and all that. Hey, are you keeping an eye on, on whether disc golf will become like a, a sport in college or intramural? And is college in the plans for you, Carter? And Chuck, you can answer that too. Uh. Not for me. College is not for me, basically. I just really don't really have a drive to do college. So, And I, I'm already making a salary, so basically sure. I just am going to stick with disc golf after school. And after I'm done with this uh, WAVA, I can, I'm, bas- I'm on the pro tour right now, then I can really hit it hard and travel everywhere and just is 18 really like a graduation up. age or what is there a graduation that that comes with wava that that people should know about yeah graduation is just like uh regular high school so he'll end up going through next year um the one cool thing that wava is allowing him to do is he's going to end up taking a couple classes this summer to lighten his load for next year to make it even easier for him to be on the road um, and focus more on the disc golf, which is great. But I, I will say disc golf is now a college sport, and there's scholarships being offered for it as well. Um, and there's a big national disc golf tournament um, for a co- collegiate disc golf tournament that had, I think, this year, what, six, over 600 players in it, um, something like that. But, yeah, it's a, it's a big deal now, and there's scholarships. And actually Carter's brother is planning on – he goes to college next year and will be on a collegiate disc golf team. All right, well, you're on the Pro Tour. You're, what, 16 years old, I believe, or 17, and and you're the youngest. So what does that mean for both of you when you read the headline? Carter Aaron's youngest pro, you know, on the tour. That's something that's got to be exciting and makes you proud, both of you. Yeah, you're the youngest out of hundreds of people playing on the Disc Golf Pro Tour. But then locally, there's a bunch of young juniors also up and comers that are playing some of the pro tour tournaments. Like I have someone from Seattle, he's 17 and he was just at this pro tour event 
and we always uh, play together. Just knowing that you're the youth on the pro tour doesn't mean you're always going to be. So you always basically need to practice and just practice and get really good so you can just do better on the pro tour. Yeah, what's been kind of fun is, you know, once he started doing really well and people got to know him, the amount of autographs that he started signing, and you would think it was just kids, but it's a lot of adults looking to get his autograph for stuff. So it's been pretty fun to to see that. And, you know, it makes us as parents proud, you know, that he's passionate about something and doing so well in it. Um, But what's been cool is over his career, he's had a lot of firsts. So at 12 years old, he set the world record for distance at uh, 13 or under 13. He was the first player ever in history, the youngest player in history, to reach uh, a 1,010 rating. Um, you know, he's the first, the youngest to ever got, get fifth on a tour event, those kind of things. So he's got a lot of really cool uh, milestones that he set that are what, – what's really nice is the people that are coming after him now are looking to break, and we've got a player that we know – that has actually broken a couple of his uh, records as well. So that's really fun to see when people are doing that. All right. As a parent, obviously, uh, and in the homeschooling world, how do you let Carter be a kid still? I mean, obviously he's doing all this stuff. How do you let him be a kid? I think listeners might want to know. Yeah, it's that's one of the interesting questions because – He's competed at a very young age at a very high level. So it's one of the few sports maybe besides like a gymnastics um, where he's competing against true on adults. Um, And so at 12 years old, he was playing at um, local as a local pro um, on against, you know, adults. And so, you know, that's been, you know, a super interesting piece of this is how do you grow up, you know, in the sport and that he's constantly with adults and around adults. And for us, it was, you almost started thinking about him more and more as an adult. And we had to take a step back and be like, you know what, this guy's still a kid. And so if you look, when he watches movies, they're kids' movies, you know, and stuff like that. So it's kind of fun to have those moments when he actually is being a kid because he's just constantly in the adult world, um, trying to compete against adults, trying to to beat the best in the world. And he's got got competitors that make a million dollars a year um, that he's competing against, and they are dang good. So... Um, you know, for him, it's really trying hard to eventually one day get to that level. Um, and he's showing, he's showing that he can do it. And so, um, as he continues to grow and get better, it's it's just going to get better and better for that as well. Carter, what's the best, what about you? How do you feel? Do you feel like you're able to be a kid while going through all of this? I got to ask. Yeah, I feel like I can, I can do basically anything I want as a kid and I can just, some of my friends also want to be on the tour. Be on the tour, so mm. they uh, we basically just practice all the time together and just like have fun conversations together. Also, I would say uh, sports is a good way to stay out of trouble. Wouldn't you both agree? <laughs> Absolutely, it is a very good way. He spends more time on the disc golf course than really anywhere else. And then if he's at home, he's watching uh, videos and things about either what how he played or how others play that he wants to emulate. So absolutely. Now I don't know if you want to answer this, but what, what about? Well, I'm curious to know the weather. Is there a typical kind of weather that you like to play this sport in? Because this is an outdoor sport, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Like the for me, the best weather is like. The best weather for me to have fun in is a nice sunny day. But for actually being from uh, Seattle, Washington, it rains all the time there. So, like, if I'm in a pro tour tournament, I would rather have it, like, rain so I can have an advantage on the field. Has has your hometown kind of considered you a prodigy? And, and what is that? How, how do you step take a step back from that and say, well, I'm only 17. I, I might be that, but I'm also, you know, a human. What? Tell us about that. Is there is there sort of labels on you now, Carter, that you're a big star in your hometown? Yeah, it's funny. Everywhere, like, I go around us, there's at least one or two people that know me at every single course, which is funny being just 16, having adults come up to me and just want my autograph. And everybody that comes to tournaments locally just like knows me and just it's cool being knowing that I'm just 16 and everybody knows me. 
Chuck, I, I love that you have uh, Carter available to talk because this is a good way to bro- break in with the communication skills and whatnot. And I think, you know, as he gets older, he'll need that, right? The communication skills. Yeah, that's that's super important for uh, in disc golf. Growing your brand is is the term that we use all the time, and um, growing a big part of growing your brand is uh, getting people to like you as a person. And so communication skills are a big part of that. And once he took fifths on the event last year on the Pro Tour event, um, he was stuck in front of cameras, you know, instantly, like a couple weeks after. So uh, it's been fun to watch. I mean, for him in front of a camera and doing so well, knowing some of the, you know, the uh, learning disabilities that he does have, but being able to talk disc golf and something he's passionate about and help get other people interested and interested in him and who he is and his personal brand um, are all important things for the, making this a career. Guys, I'm seeing him throw the first pitch out of the Seattle Mariner game this year. What do you guys think? Uh, he, he might be throwing this out of it. That's for sure. <laughs> he's he's throwing uh, at the Rainier stadium. He's throwing this out of the field in front of people. So that is so cool. Well, as a human uh, on the human side, then, Carter, uh, is there any favorite sports that you like that that maybe when you're not doing disc golf that you're you're following intensely? Yeah, when I'm not doing disc golf, I love watching football. I think it's a really fun thing to watch and basically playing golf whenever I can when I'm not on the disc golf course. Now, did you both grow up Seattle fans? I'm guessing, right? The Mariners, Seahawks, and even Supersonics back in the day, Chuck. Yeah, I moved there about 25 years ago, so a little bit after the Supersonics, um, or I guess shortly after they um, went away. But uh, for us, yeah, definitely Seahawks uh, and Mariners fans. Well, this is this has been very cool, and and it's so exciting to get to talk to you guys. Um, what's the toughest question you faced you faced Carter in your press tour, if you will? Uh. I don't really know. <laughs> he's, had, he's had a few of them. Um, I think a lot of times people are asking, you know, what's the key to being 16 and being able to throw how he does? And sometimes it's hard to put that into words. He just kind of goes out and does it. Now, Chuck, how do you, how do you coach your son? I mean, do you feel like you're, you're coaching him um, on and off the field and in and out of the classroom, right? So how are you able to coach him and, and – does it take a little patience for you as well, you know, working with Carter on these different projects and whatnot? Yeah, I mean, a little bit. Patience is, is definitely important, especially for, you know, I can't coach him much on the disc golf course because I don't play myself. Um, but what I'm able to do is watch. And so I can pick up on things that are working and things that aren't working that he doesn't maybe know is happening. So I'm able to do that. Um, but disc golf is so mental. The mental side of it is a, a big piece of it. So when you can start to overcome, you know, things like getting angry um, when things aren't going your way and just being patient that your round will eventually come to you and your disc golf game will come back to you and just throw what you know, um, those are the important things. And that's what we try to coach on. You know, I, I got to say this, parenting in sports has kind of become controversial because everybody's so riled up at these little league games and whatnot. So I feel like you're, you're bringing a new face to the, the parenting in sports world, Chuck. So that, that's good because we got to we gotta say that parents are vital in their kids' sports, right? Oh, absolutely. We just need to sometimes stay out of the way. And, you know, so for us, it's just, hey, do you know that this is happening? What do you think of this? A lot of what we do is just ask questions, you know, about his game, whether it's currently or what's happening. Hey, do you think that's the the right disc? Do you, what about this? Um, but for him, you know, we're letting him make a lot of those decisions with just some reminders or some some questions, and not trying to tell him what to do because he knows better than anyone. Uh, is Wava great for both of you in the terms of trying to, um, and in terms of homeschooling? Because I feel like homeschooling another thing in the news getting a bad rap, but here you guys are success stories. So is Wava sort of changing the game for homeschooling? I'd like both of your answers on that. Absolutely. I think, you know, we've been talking to a lot of people about the program, and so um, different folks in different sports are starting to explore it, especially since uh, the school district that we were, we were in got rid of their online schooling program. Wava became one of our few choices, and we're so glad that we went with them, you know, not only from the public school aspect, but the platform and the people, I mean, the, the teachers are phenomenal. The teach, you know, the people are great. So they've, the 
teachers, counselors, the people that are directors of the program have all been fantastic um, and nothing but uh, great in what we have been able to do in allowing Carter to do this. Carter, any any thoughts to add to that? Yeah, I would just say everything. Everybody is so nice in that uh, online schooling and just having it being so flexible and just everything about it is just super easy to do if you're an athlete and you don't have that flexible of a schedule. When I hear that you're salaried, I'm sure every 17 year old wants to be a salaried athlete on a pro tour. Um, But that takes work, doesn't it? Yeah. Like I started when I was six and I've probably spent at least, 30 hours uh, a week, I think, every year. Wow. That's that's amazing, Chuck. That, that, uh, and you guys, in the pitch, you guys are so dedicated to him. Uh, when did you, when did you latch on and say, you know what, Carter, we're going to, we're going to do this? Was that six? Was it earlier? Was it about 12? Like, when did you guys say, all right, we're invested this with you? Yeah. When he was nine, he ended up going, to Junior Worlds and uh, consecutively took something like a, a third place and a second place. Um, and so we knew really early on that, you know, there was something special there. But as we started to put him against, you know, adults, he was winning a lot. And once he started winning um, some of the bigger events, we, we said, hey, let's just pr- try the Pro Tour. And everything we've done for him has been playing against people that are better than him, which has made him – that was the right way to do it. You know, we always questioned, Hey, should we move him up to the next level this early? Um, and then six months later he would win at that level. And so we were doing the knew we were doing things right because he's learning from players that are better than him and, you know, adults and what they do. So uh, that's been a big, you know, big part of it in doing it. And so that's kind of how we knew that, Hey, he kept winning and winning. We went to the pro, first couple pro tour events did well. And literally the first, you know, year that he's, in the first six months of being on last year's pro tour, he takes a fifth and a 15th. Um, and we knew things were uh, really ready to blow up from there. Do either of you see a day where Carter might actually, you know, go to tournaments uh, on his own? Like when, when he's a little older, do you see that happening or will you guys stay by his side or will there be some um, independence if you will, that he'll be able to travel on his own? What are your thoughts on that? Is there an expectation on that? Yeah, so for me right now, I'm 16. I could easily get my driver's license and travel to other tournaments and stuff. But I've actually chosen not to do driver's ed and do all that stuff just to have that extra practice. Nice. And when I turn 18, I I can just take a test and get my driver's license without doing all that, uh, all those classes. And then, like, after that... I could possibly go to like local tournaments and even further. And Chuck, is it a daunting thought that he might travel on his own one day? Or are you encouraging that along the way here? Yeah, it'll be on one hand, it's going to be a sad, you know, point just because it's so fun to watch him, but yeah, he's going to need that independence. And, you know, the one really cool thing is he's got some friends that are kind of following in his footsteps and, um, they've all already kind of made plans that they want to be together on tour. So who knows, they might have a big RV and four dudes just rolling around at 17, 18, 19 years old, um, going to play in these tournaments. So, but that's, I'm sure that's coming uh, before we know it. And I'm sure, cause you've been there in the teenage years, you want them to have that experience, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. Well, this has been great. One last thing, cause I got to say you're 16 year, you're on the tour. You got, fa- do you have any fangirls? I got to ask if you got girls on the tour coming after you, I got to ask that. Uh, not really. It's all, it's basically just, uh, guys that coming up to me for fans. Yeah. yeah. As fans. Yeah. That are asking for autographs and stuff. There's not a lot of, you know, there's not a ton of women in disc golf. We, we, it's growing and growing more and more. So we definitely welcome that. Very cool. Well, thank you both for this. And, uh, I will definitely would love to have you back on as, as you go through a few of these tours, uh, come back on and tell us how you did. Yeah, that'd be cool. What a great story of Carter and Chuck Aarons. And I just told them as they were hanging up 
for Carter to always cherish his parents. You know, my dad, at three years old and on a walker on one leg, said, you're going to run. And he put me in the peewee races when I was just three years old. So I felt a sort of symbiosis between what Carter's going through and how his family's supporting him and through my journey as well. And so there you have it. Always cherish your parents. They're going to be by your side even when you empty the nest. And I've learned that over the last few months moving in with Gabby in Port Washington that my mom and my stepdad Vic always there for me as they always have been for the last 25 plus years and mom 30 plus years on the Alex Garrett Podcast Network.